been with us from the beginning. Whichever way we're streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana, please share the link, let as many people watch it, especially today uh, because of the fact that we have an all-women panel. We'll have one man join us, by the way, but of course because he has the expertise in the topic that we're going to be discussing, the debt exchange program, and the fact that, um, of course, we were officially informed that uh, because, you know, the, the pension funds were excluded from the debt restructuring program or the debt exchange program, individual bondholders were included, um, you know, in this program. And that has caused some uproar with individual bondholders speaking up and insisting that they will not accept, um, you know, this inclusion. And in fact, they are calling on their members, as many of them as possible, to reject it. Now, there's a message that apparently has been circulating from certain banks uh, to customers of these various banks who are individual bondholders, asking them to sign on to this debt exchange uh, program within a certain period. And yesterday, we had a group of individual bondholders coming together and saying that we will not accept this. And so if you have received one of such messages, we entreat you to not sign on to it. Let's take a look at um, these three groups of individual bondholders who is leading the charge and asking that Ghanaians do not, um, you know, give into that. And so uh, group one is led by uh, lawyer Martin Kwebu, and it's one group for individual bond bondholders. And then group two led by senior host Franklin Kujo and a number of other people, and they're open to direct and indirect bond investors. And there's a third group that's led by a former SEC boss, Dr. Edua Nane, and yesterday he was speaking, and he represents the pensioners, and uh, he's also explaining why they want to take a class action against government. Even though there's a statement from the finance ministry indicating that even if you take this action, for some reason, um, it would not really uh, go the way you're expecting because there's a caption labeled enforcement of civil liabilities in the 58th page amended and restated exchange mem memorandum to individual bondholders. That indicates that even if you go ahead to file a lawsuit or you go to court against them, you may not be able to get the action that is required. Let's listen to Senor Hussi. Yesterday he sat down with uh, my colleague and he was, of course, explaining why they decided to go this route. Take a look. I just want to know why you've decided to take this action against government. Um, it's been quite obvious that in this entire engagement, individual bondholders have not been at the table. Um, they've not been invited to the table. And practically, you are having a unilateral breach being um, instigated by a government, telling you to take it or leave it. Mm. Um, that is quite oppressive mm. and not really typical of a democracy where we should really be getting a lot more consensus building, you know, and, and engagement. More importantly, the implications of, of the of the program is far-reaching, it's catastrophic for the lives of, of individual bondholders. Many people depend on this for so much. What has been their crime? To trust their government? These people vote the government into office. These same members of ours are the same group of people who decide to not trust government, to honor one of the fundamental principles in finance, that governments issuing instruments in their home currencies are effectively issuing risk-free instruments. We had a banking crisis. People were even accused of rather being greedy. People took some haircuts, but government intervened. Now, government itself is now the crisis. It is quite ridiculous, and you're asking us to pay. Who caused this? It is government's mismanagement of the economy. Every time politicians mismanage affairs, they always come back to ask the people to pay for it. As we speak, individual bondholders are already paying for government's mismanagement of the, of the sector. Inflation is eating and eroding Depreciation as well. It's creating discomfort for many people. Companies are laying people off. So individual bondholders would have to share their wealth with who? Their family members. Then you increase taxes. Again, you are eating into our income. Practically, you are acting as if Ghanaians don't have a right to make an income. You run down to, you ask the public to pay a third debt recovery levy. You run down the energy sector, pay energy sector, sector levy. Then you run down this, then you say pay this tax. 
we can't always be at the at the wrong end of the bargain every time people have contributed 500 cities for years to build a savings hoping that they will get to 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 to, to retirement and be able to benefit from it because you and i know our retirement income is nothing great people make savings hoping to build a house people make savings hoping to marry People have been saving their money and investing and trusting that government, which is a risk free one, giving less return than the open market, is our surest bet to us realizing our wealth goals. All right, so that's Mr. Senior Hosi. He's a convener for the Individual Bondholders Forum. And yesterday they put out a press statement on the domestic debt exchange. In fact, there were some three steps that they were charging their members uh, to take. So for direct bondholders, they're saying reject and refrain from complying with the mandatory deadline imposed under the debt exchange program and join the efforts of the IBF. Now, what is the deadline? Let's put that up so you can see. Initially, when the debt exchange uh, program was announced, there was a deadline that was given. The first deadline was on December 19, 2022. I remember that the labor unions were up in arms about this. They were asking that government exclude pension funds because, first of all, they did not engage them before even going ahead to announce the domestic debt exchange program. Eventually, um, there was a second deadline that was given on December 30, 2022. And that was after the pension funds were excluded from um, the exchange program. But in place of that, the individual bondholders were now um, added to it, who initially were not part of it. Now there's a third deadline. It's been extended to January 16, which is this coming Monday. And so if you do not sign on to it, we're told that there are some losses that, um, you know, you will incur. But the second step would be the indirect bondholders, and they're asking them to inform their fund managers not to accept the DDE. And thirdly, a charge to governments to open a channel of communication for immediate, frank, transparent, and sincere dialogue on the DDE, which is the Domestic Debt Exchange Program, with the Individual Bond um, Holders Forum, with the view to seek an effective resolution to the developing impasse and the fast depleting confidence in the Ghanaian economy. Joining me this morning in the studios, and this would be the first time I'm meeting all of you this year, right? Well, Ellen Amadek, who, uh, of course, represents the NPP, and she's a member of their communication team. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, you look well. Yes, I mean, God has granted us another year, yeah. so we yeah. are grateful. Yeah, we're grateful indeed. <laughs> and of course, Nanaya Achimpim Jantwa also joins us this morning. She's a general secretary for the CPP. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How darling. are you doing? I'm good. I mm. mean, God has granted us 2023. <clears throat> mm. Some people couldn't make it, yeah. but we have made it. So by the grace of God, I mean, we are good. And yeah. The system is not good for what you are, I mean, meeting us with this morning, but God has has been good. Mm. So let's give thanks to him. It is well. Beatrice Annan Esquire is also joining us. She is a member of the NDC's legal team, and she's here this morning. Interesting that you're all wearing black this morning. I was asking you if there was something happening. Yeah. I guess I, it was a coincidence. No, I will be going to court after tea. Oh, so, so that's, that's why. why How are you doing? Happy New Year. Many happy returns. Everything okay? Mm, we are not fine. Uh, we are not fine. What's I, wrong? I personally have had a lot of people call me about the debt restructuring. And I can empathize with people who have saved, whose savings are going down the drain, whose mm. lifetime investment are going down the drain, who also have lost their jobs because of the pandemic and other things. And these people... <laughs> these people, I don't know, sometimes it's difficult what to tell them. Some mm. people want to take legal actions. They don't even have the money in the first place, even to foot administrative fees because their monies are locked up. Mm. Even those who are willing to accept the losses, who perhaps, or some even have monies with data bank, they can't have access to the physical cash. So. It's, it's, it's a mixture of feelings for me, but I can only hope that God will see the, them through. That's that's all I can say. Hmm. It, it's difficult. And in fact, yesterday we were hearing from some individual bondholders who were threatening suicide. That's how bad the situation is because they say they've invested all their monies into some of these bonds. And so they were okay when government had mentioned earlier that they would not be included in the domestic debt exchange program, only to eventually find out that now they are likely to lose about 60% of their 
of their income or their earnings or investments. And for them, that is a no-no. Shortly, we'll be joined by Professor Lord Mensah from the University of Ghana Business School Finance uh, Department so he can break it down further for us. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Uh, to introduce Prof and then we'll start the conversation. Welcome back and yes, it's all fun here um, in the studios, but we're going to talk serious business now. It's the big issue and earlier I introduced my female guest to you. Let me do it again before I, I catch flack for not mentioning that, especially with what has happened so far. But anyway, uh, <laughs> lawyer Beatrice Annan is here and she's a member of the NDC uh, legal team and their communications team as well. You're welcome again, Beatrice. No, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Nanaya Chimpim Janta is the General Secretary for the CPP. Ellen Amadeko is here on behalf of the NPP's communications team. But joining us again, uh, Professor Lord Mensah, University of Ghana Business School Finance Department. Good morning, Good morning. and thank you for joining us. Good How you feeling? Do you feel welcome? Yes. So we'll take care of you, don't worry. <laughs> yes, we will. Definitely. Oh. But let's start off with Ellen. And, and yesterday when I was listening to Senor Husi, and of course, if you read their statements, one of the things that they mentioned as the steps to take would be the fact that government opens a channel of communication for immediate, frank, transparent, and sincere dialogue. So clearly indicating that there was no communication at all before government decided to include individual bondholders in the domestic debt exchange program. This is not the first time. When it was announced initially, the labor unions came out and said, we have not been informed, we have not been engaged, so we will not accept this. We see this repeating over and over. Why is government adamant in engaging if they are? Or what is the reason why they are not able to engage some of these unions or stakeholders before making some decisions? Good morning and uh, good morning to my co-panelists and a happy new year to all our viewers. The individual bondholders, if you remember, they were added after the pension fund yeah. holders uh, protested and after their meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe one of the reasons why maybe they didn't go, the information didn't go right out was because we're also getting close to Christmas. I did see uh, that's a press statement stating mm -hmm. that the individual bondholders have been added. But mm -hmm. that was around the 25th or the mm -hmm. 26th. Yeah. And so a lot of people had, you know, closed shop for, for Christmas. And I believe it was going to be quite difficult to get all of them on board. But, I mean, there's a way of getting, getting them. When it was time for them to sign on, the banks were able to send them messages that they should mm -hmm. sign on. So I believe that the, the communication didn't really go as it should. Mm. One, I'll blame it on the Christmas time. And then I just feel that those who are in charge of dissemination, the information simply were not, were not up to the tax. But, but, but is that a good I also, excuse, Ellen? I mean, I, if you're I dealing also, with my money, no matter the season, if you call me and you tell me I need to engage you because I intend to I, include you in domestic debt exchange program, no matter what it is, I would still give you audience. We, you so just we ask me what it. happened. And I'm just explaining that I believe, I, that is not even from the Ministry of Info, um, okay. Finance. I am stating mm. that I believe the one of the reasons why the information didn't get out that fast was because we're in the Christmas season. But then we are out of the Christmas season now. Today is mm. what's, what's today's date? Today is the 12th. Today is the 12th, 12, 12 yes. days. So as I was saying, I believe that those who are involved in all this should have gotten to them very fast. But um, already, they have already put themselves up in a group as yeah, you just stated mm -hmm. to us. And one of the things that they are asking for is... is for the Ministry of Finance to engage them. I believe that engagement will come on very soon. But How we soon? do not, I, I, as I said, I really, I haven't heard anything. So you're just conjecturing at this I point? I am just You're stating, not saying it based on facts? I haven't heard anything from the Ministry of Finance okay. yet. Okay. I believe by the end of today, all of us should hear something from them. But I, I still would agree with, 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 with them on that point, that when you are dealing with somebody's money, mm. you should engage the person. You do not wait, put out a statement, and it seems to be repetitive. Mm. It's the same thing that happened with the pension funds, they were up and against. It's the same thing that is happening with them. And it's the same thing that is happening with practically even those of us who communicate for government. Some mm. of us have been fighting <coughs> them that give us information. Because when we do have information, it is easy mm -hmm. to, to defend it. So as for today, I think I'm going all out on the Ministry of Finance and their communications team. Mm. We are waiting for information. Engage all of us. You still don't have information well, on this? That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. That I'm hoping that by the end of today, we should have it. But you are dealing with people's money. Yes, we all agree we are in a, in a crisis. We mm. are all trying to, to sort ourselves out. But information is important. Mm. But that notwithstanding, I would also um, is it plead with the 
individual bondholders to please engage with 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 government. And as okay. they said, the, their banks have sent them some messages yeah. on what they should do. And I would plead that they shouldn't throw it out into the dustbin as they want to they do. Shouldn't. They shouldn't. What should they, they do? Should, they should engage. And for me, I think we should all help government to make this this whole system and this whole issue work. But I'll still be on the Ministry of Finance. We do need information. Is this not interesting, Anaya? I mean, we have a government communicator here who's saying that even them, they don't have information. And this is something that we've decried on this show and across the country over time. Lack of engagement. Individual bondholders are threatening suicide at this point. They are saying that I'm about to lose about 60% of my investment. I'm not ready for that. What do you say? Will you be ready for that? <laughs> you, Bella, will you be ready to lose... 60% of your life savings. Let me say a good morning to your viewers, a good morning to my comrades in the Convention People's Party and a Happy New Year to Ghanaians, and a good morning to my co-panelists, especially um, the visitor amongst us. <laughs> 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 Professor, you mean? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Prof, you are welcome. Thank you. You see, the point is that, Bella, there is a wanton disregard and disrespect for the Ghanaian from this government. They do not care. They do not regard us. Why do you say that? If you do regard me and you want to go into my money, my investment, you would find a way to speak to me. You would find a way to engage me. If you, it, you see, it is not obligatory that we, we assist government. Mm. We gave them the power. The Constitution says that the sovereignty of this nation lies in the people of Ghana. And we have given them the power. We gave them a job to do and they have failed. Why should we pay for their mismanagement? This morning when I was coming, I heard that the government has taken 339 million um, Ghana cities from the consolidated fund without approval from anybody. What for, are they taking that money for? The National Cathedral, etc., etc. Okuje to a black hole, say if he's lying, I'm also lying. So is this a fresh one? Because I he remember when the finance minister was asked, he yes, said that there was yes. a separate um, yes. you know, vault where he A separate the vault from where is it? Is it theirs? It's a contingency vault. But is it their money? Is it their personal money? Is it the, the money? Is it not for Ghanaians? This is a, you see, this is complete disregard and disrespect for us. They do not care. Because how can you sit down and, you, you see, in, I mean, initially, these people, you see, there are some mafias. Eh? Which uh, people? The government, the MPP, there are some mafias. They, they, I think they, their genealogy is within the, uh, um, the, the Italian mafia. That's quite harsh. No, no, but how can you tell us initially mm -hmm. that individual bonds are not going to be touched? Mm -hmm. For me, it didn't make sense to me. Because I'm not an economist, there's an economist here. But the fund managers, where we keep our money, our pensions, whatever, mm. they use the money we give them to invest in government bonds. And at the end of the day, we share the profit. If I'm wrong, somebody should tell me. Mm. So how can you tell me that I will not be affected inadvertently by some design? We will be affected. But they said we are not going to be affected. Then they go behind the scenes. And say that now we are affected because they had to exclude the pension funds. But who the pension funds? Who owns who who owns those funds? Mm. Those are owned by individuals as well. It is owned by individuals. Well, a group of individuals. Have a group. Come together, it is still yes. individuals. Mm. My money is there. Mm. I'm not still. You see, one thing that I didn't like when I was working in public service before MPP took me out was the fact that my money should not be looked after by somebody. That the snitch. Mm. The, um, all these trustees. And this is what it has come to. Those, it is our money. What I have put aside for my own salary to look after myself when I, I am on that working stick. When I've got into 60 where I, I, I'm, I'm debilitating gradually, mm. where I cannot work. Now you, you say you are going to touch it. How do we even know that it is not an untruth? These people at the APP government, they are always not um, um, truthful. Because they will tell us that they are not going to touch pension funds. Then tomorrow they'll come around in another way, behind the scenes, to touch it. 
So what would you have expected them to do, especially when after you have, they gave into the labor union? When you have mismanaged the funds. economy, you do not expect us to suffer. So that the debt exchange program shouldn't have even been They should have found, in, yes, a better days. way. And when they were mismanaging the economy and shading our money and doing all manner of things and chopping $3 billion um, of COVID um, money, the COVID money that was given to us, they were sharing it like Father Christmas. Where? Uh, they gave that woman from San Erugu. She said she was giving 100,000 Ghana CDs. It's still her word against them. They haven't really come out to deny uh, but you think that if, or confirm. No, but the point is, word against what? If somebody accuses you, you don't say anything. It is the truth. They should come and tell us it is not true. The woman dead them. You, you see, Bella, it is so sad that this government came with so much promises. 2017, what didn't they say? We are paying too many taxes. 2015, 2016, we had so much hope that it will work why are we here today they say covid ukraine covid so when a bomb drops in ukraine whatever the effects are, fe are felt in ghana in december the city appreciated we were ukraine was still in war did the war stop they said it appreciated mm. it, it didn't even make sense that inflation was so high and there was an appreciation of the mm. city they did some magic in the machinations. Maybe Prof will break it down for us uh, ah, yes, maybe shortly. You, yes, you'll break um, it down. Hopefully, yes. Do you get me? But now, where is the, where is this standing? Do we still have the, the, AC, the AC? Well, it's depreciating again. That yeah. is the point. I mean, that was very artificial, manipulated with the press conference. <laughs> that they came and said that we have reached an agreement, $3 billion is coming. So is there was some movement in the market. Which was not sustainable. Okay. So, so you say that the domestic debt exchange program should not have been announced uh, my at dear, all. The point is that how can you come and take 60% of what is mine and reschedule it? Do you know why I put the money there? Do you know why? Uh, do you know the plan I have? Do you know the budget that I have for my life? Do you know my life? Some people are even sick. They are not well. They depend on the, I mean, the interest on some of these things to mm -hmm. even buy medicine. You see, fortunately for them, in old age, they are in government. So we are looking after them. There are some people who don't have anybody to look after them. Yeah. There are some people who don't have kids. They don't have any dependents. And our social service system is bad. It's not like in the UK where, or in the US where you'll be looked after when you are in that vulnerable uh, state. And you don't have any mercy on us after chopping our money. After mismanaging the economy, after getting e-levy, pickpocketing, putting your hand in our wallet to take money from it any time we make a movement of cash on our mobile wallet, you take a certain percentage. Now you want to take our investment. Bella, is it fair? Would you agree to that? I, I wouldn't. And of course, I, I don't see why anyone should. But Prof, I'll come to you shortly. Let me go to Beatrice and let's bring in a legal perspective because there's a tweet that came from Bright Simmons. And he said that uh, at least three groups representing individual bondholders have commenced mobilization to file class action lawsuits. One of these groups is led by former SEC boss. And we saw, um, you know, the groups and who was leading them. But then there was also... Um, you know, a communicate from the ministry. And as part of that communication on page 58, um, it did state that the amended and restated exchange memorandum to individual bondholders, um, while Ghana is a sovereign state and any legal action taken by bondholders against the country will be difficult to materialize. What does that really mean? That even if they go ahead to file a lawsuit, they may not get the results? I, I think they should be telling us what they mean by telling citizens that if you go to a court of competent jurisdiction where the judge is not subject to the direction of government, she will not win. I, I, I don't know. I can't speak for government. But Bella, for the class action and for the people who want to take the class action, it's important that this morning we all ask ourselves, why are we where we are? Mm. Why did we have to get to a situation in the history of this country that no government has ever gotten us this low. Why do we have to this morning discuss why the government 
having made us 54.1% poorer by inflation, mm. is seeking to take away the very work that we've done at a time when they have created the highest level of unemployment. Bella, we live in a country where we don't like honesty. And because we politicize everything, sometimes when you speak as a party communications person, people are not able to decouple the politics from the data and the reality. And I say that on this note, I am super proud to be a member of the NDC. If ever I made that decision to speak for the NDC, this is the moment where I will show that pride. Why? Why do I say that? In 2013, this country found itself in some difficulty because of external shocks. Mm. What did the then NDC do? Before going to the IMF, it was important that the then NDC do debt restructuring. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time we are doing debt restructuring in Ghana. No individual and minor companies were touched. Mm -hmm. What did we do? Given the vision of President John Mahama and the team of people with open and transparency in consultation with various CSO mm. and everybody that mattered that had the potential to be affected, we deliberated. And then the NDC created the sinking fund. Mm. That sinking fund on the average had about a hundred million dollars, where if you borrowed any money, you kept some. You didn't have to use it for, on your family and friends. We had the stabilization fund. We had the Exim Bank. We had major economic buffers because the ESLA, because what did we see? We saw that because of the structure of our economy, if we were to borrow just like that without investing in capital expenditure and in very productive areas, and if you were irresponsible, you would land your nation and the citizens where the MPP have landed us. So we created all these, even the oil revenue. We had the Heritage Fund to say that, let's keep this. And so there was that foundation for economic transformation. And that is why when the MPP came into government in 2017, without even any work done, you saw an economic growth of over 8.4% mm. in 2017. Because we had laid the foundation, we had learned as a country, we have consulted, and every time the... The, the primary responsibility of the NDC was that the citizens should be better. Then emerged their distinguished series speakers who said that we will move the country from what the NDC is doing. We could do times eight. When they came to see the money in the sinking fund, the stabilization fund, what ESLA can do, what the Exim Bank can do, then they said, oh, is there so much money here that you people don't know what to use it for? Let's begin and run a family and friend government. They didn't say that. Oh, did, did they you? tell you that? So they, they lived it. They didn't say it. So they lived it. That let's begin to do family and friends. And so the finance minister has to be the president cousin. What he, did he do? Because they <coughs> saw these funds, the finance minister went on a borrowing spree. Ella. Bella, mm. we've borrowed 400, more than 400 billion under this government in six years. Mm. The finance minister and the deputy finance minister have benefited a total of 247 million by way of book runners. What did they use the money for? And why are we where we are? We use 600 million cities to purchase sanitizer. 45 billion cities have gone down the pockets of government officials by way of corruption, which the Auditor General report from 2017 captures. 32 million cities to buy data for virtual conferencing. What did we do? 
68 million CDs for presidential travel in nine months. So when you use your money, in fact, even you the street lights, the street light, they use mm. 4.5 million. Mm. When you use your monies and the resources of the nation, the money you have borrowed, mm. when your predecessor set up the path to economic recovery, and you come and use it like this, we will be where we are. Mm. But Bella, assuming we are even where we are, and government says that mm. I have learned my mistakes, or maybe we were so reckless because of the 2020 election, we didn't see this coming, we would turn over a new leaf and begin to do the right thing. We would have all said that, oh, you know what, let's take a sigh mm. and support government. But what is government doing? Having benefited from the borrowing, having benefited by way of corruption, the government says that when there is an issue, all persons who are citizens, apart from their families and friends, should be the ones paying. Why? Apart from their family and friends? Yes. Well, you because never the know. There might be individual bond the, holders no, but the, well, so the they will be affected. The finance minister is not affected. Did, have you seen any government official complaining that they, they have been affected? Have but you, have you not, heard any? Are they not? Have you heard any? So are Bella, you saying please, that they have not invested in some of these Bella, mutual have fund, you uh, heard, funds and all that? You, do you know We cannot any. say for a fact. Have, do you know any? You don't know any complaining. So okay. to the extent that citizens are complaining and they are not complaining, we are right to presume that those who have been affected or they have so much money that when mm -hmm. they are affected, it's not a concern. I'm saying that the government's recklessness, you see, this government is so incompetent. And if we were to live with only their incompetence, we would have been okay. But the sheer arrogance and dishonesty is what disgusts me sometimes. Governments are supposed to pay for this year 2023 mm. a total of about two billion to individual holders by way of interest mm. the government has budgeted one billion cities for contingency votes <coughs> they don't know what they are going to use the one billion cities for they have just budgeted in case there is an issue with national cathedral we will go there and take the money like we've been doing in previous years so why allot one billion for something you don't even know mm. And then you deny citizens two billion. Now, if you look at the data they themselves brought of the 137 billion cities, mm -hmm. individuals have about 11%, 11 yeah. which is about 16, 16 oh, okay. billion. Okay. The government has increased its expenditure from 137 billion in 2021 to 204 which is an increase of 67 billion and so at the time when we are suffering at the time when people who cannot afford drugs at the time when young people cannot find job are suffering mm. at the time when for the first time there is there is that unanimity in the voice of everybody that our lives and livelihoods are being affected the government says that i cannot give you the 16 billion as individuals and ex uh, um, i mean exempt you mm -hmm. but i can increase my expenditure further by 67 billion would the colonial masters even do this to us okay this is where we are and if cso's if the clergy, if all the voices who found their voices under President Mahama, at a time when we, are not, we were not even seeing 1% of this, Ghana. Occupy Ghana, lawyers who were working like a boo, the Ghana Bar Association, and everybody who feel that they have Ghana at heart, they have kept quiet, and together our nation is sinking. You, the media, you have kept quiet. How have we kept we quiet? We have kept quiet. How many times are you doing sensitization? How many times are you holding government responsible? But is we this not live, one of them? I mean, we do we not use our maybe, platform maybe to educate, we, maybe we educate Ghanaians but how and to many, let them understand what's going on? We live in a state where the government is living like an Arabian king and an oligarch over our lives and the future of our children. Today, okay. there is no get fun for our children. It has been collateralized. We live in a very difficult times. And if all of us will not join to speak, we will sing together. But at the end of it all, the government is better off. Because okay. remember, the finance minister alone is better off than the whole ministry in Ghana. Okay, Prof, could we have done away with the domestic debt exchange program? And if that was possible, what would have been put in place to ensure that we're able to still restructure our debts? Well, good morning and uh, good morning to my fellow panelists and um, our viewers out there. 
Yes, clearly, um, I would say that um, we needed this exercise because okay. um, the level that the economy has been you know, mismanaged to, it gives the signal that if government does not create that fiscal space, mm. it will be difficult. And what is restricting the government from that, you know, having that restricted fiscal space is interest payment and salaries. Mm. But then clearly, it is an exercise that is inevitable. Then how do you go about it? You see, the investor space is so complex to the extent that if you touch eight investment, Mm. You are likely to touch this investment as well. Because I do, we do investment through institutions. Yeah. We do investment directly. Now, if you look at what is happening now, the entire investment community is in a shock. Mm. In a shock for two reasons. The first reason is the levels of interest rates that have been promised as an exchange for what they were expecting. Mm. The second one is you know, the kind of package that a government is presenting, which is more or less one-sided, you know, sacrifice. Mm. In times like this, and I, I always quote the finance minister, I mean, in reading his budget, he mentions burden sharing. Yeah. And when economies are in difficulty, you share or you sacrifice, I mean, amongst individuals, those who are responsible and those who are not responsible. So effectively, we all sacrifice. Mm. But looking at the package of this debt exchange, you can clearly see that is the sacrifice is being pushed to the investor. Mm. And if I say investor, I mean the pensions, the mutual funds that mm -hmm. have invested in government bonds, the banks who are carrying the larger chunk of the entire government bond holdings, yeah. talking about rural banks mm -hmm. to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at insurance and all those. These are all creditors that bought into the government bonds. Government is the borrower. Where is the government sacrifice? So when you look at this, and then the, the interest rate that was promised, you see, let's be realistic on the grounds. If you trace the history of our interest rate structures, since when has the investor put his money in government instrument? Apart from savings, that was around 10%. Yeah. That the investor has earned 10% before. Mm. Let me take the maximum that the government is exchanging for. The level is telling you that the investor is in a shock because all these years, the minimum investment has come to is 14%. Mm. That was treasury bills. Mm -hmm. So if you turn up to be presenting 5% and 10% subsequently to the next maybe uh, 15 years, yeah. I mean, it's quite scary. And even that one, Based on our history, as far as economic mismanagement is concerned, for which you are holding the principal for all these years, mm. I mean, any rational investor will be shocked. Mm. He's not even sure that the principal that you are holding will come at the end of the, you know, um, um, uh, the period. Yeah. So there are several forms of packaging a debt exchange to make counterparties comfortable. Okay. And, and if I those? say Counterparty comfortability. I mean, government will be comfortable, and then, you know, the investor will also be comfortable. What are these forms, then? You see, the levels of interest rate that has been promised is backloaded. If, I mean, if I should put it that way. Mm -hmm. Backloaded in a sense that the investor will enjoy marginally when he's getting to the latter part of his investment, the maturity, because mm -hmm. that's when you start enjoying 10% and all that. Mm -hmm. 0%, you know, this year, 5% next year. Yeah. I mean, what prevents the government? Mm -hmm. And to say that, I'm not saying this should be the package, but there is a suggestion. And I'm tempted to say that the consultant were hired to do, to do this job mm. were outsiders who does not understand the context, you know, the, the, the Ghanaian context. We did not use any internal, mm -hmm. local... That, I'm tempted to say that. Okay. The reason why I'm saying this is that I've mentioned the interest rate levels, yeah. which has never come below 10% on government bonds before. Mm -hmm. And then also, I'm looking at the possibility of, you know, the pensioner mm -hmm. who has received his gratuity, lump sum, mm. and then put that 
in government bonds directly himself. Yeah. Apart from that, the monthly income, the monthly pensions he's supposed to enjoy, that should be provided by the pension fund, mm -hmm. right? It's also invested in government bonds. So the pensioner is taking a double dose of yeah. this shock. A double dose of this shock. Mm. The reason I'm saying that we did not maybe use the local, you know, because you need to understand the investment mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Understand the complexities. Understand how the interconnectivities within the space before you take a decision. You see, when pensioners, pension fund was part of the entire exchange, you heard noise from existing workers who are contributing. Yeah. I'm talking about the TUC. Yeah. You did not hear anything from, you know, the pens those who are on pensions mm. because they are, I mean, assuming those who are active will fight on their behalf. Mm. And of course, at this time, most of them are weak. Yeah. And now you try to involve individuals. These individuals, uh, majority of them, if you go into details and you get to know mm. those individuals, Majority of them are people who have certain quantums of money mm -hmm. that they decide to place it directly with the government. Because you only place investment directly when you have large you know, money to invest. Mm. If you have small money, you go through the fund. And most small investors like you know, teachers who are just contributing yeah. little by little for their you know, future, goes through the fund mm. to create that bigger chunk to invest in the government fund. So all that we are do we, I'm saying is that we should have understood the investment space okay. very well. Go into details, and this happened some time ago when we, uh, the Americans, they had this 2008 you know, financial crash. Mm. It's a misunderstanding of those who were, who were holding the mortgages. That brought about the mortgage problems. Mm. Because they didn't understand, they, 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 they were dealing with the, the funds in bulk. And this is, that's what this government did. He made an announcement met the fund managers, met those who matter in that, you know, upper level mm -hmm. without looking at going into details who owns those, those investments. investments, whether they, are, they own it directly or they own it indirectly. Okay. So effectively, it tells you that the exercise, you know, uh, wasn't well thought through. So I think it, does, it won't change anything. The entire process needs to be revised. The entire process? Oh, Yes. The reason so, why I'm so, saying this is that, okay. you see, before you go into debt exchange, you are coming to tell the creditor that, hey, I may not have money. Um, let's, let's come home. I mean, let's do a bit mm -hmm. of exercise here, role play here. Myself and Ellen, mm -hmm. we, we can do that role play. Ellen, I, I borrowed money from you. And then I say, okay, um, I'm going to pay you, but I'll pay you in one year time. But then Ellen will see me give, I mean, giving him her the signal that I'm prepared to go and borrow from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Would Ellen be happy? No. If you take our no, budget... I thought you'd let her respond. Then we'll no, she won't be happy okay. because I'm going to borrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to borrow, which at the end of the day, I may not be able to pay her. Yeah. So effectively, for this government to, I mean, succeed in this entire debt exchange, we should have started from the budget we read for 2023. Mm. The budget we read for 2023, there's nothing in there that shows that government was ready for debt restructuring. You see what we created? Budget deficit of yeah. 65 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to finance this 65 billion? In an environment where you are doing debt restructuring, where the investors' confidence in government's long term has dropped yeah. to T-bills, to short-term horizon, mm. to the point where you are looking at, you know, the euro bond market where you've been priced out because you can't borrow from there anymore. How are you going to finance this, you know, 65 billion? So the signals from that budget does not portray that government was ready for this debt. So which is why we should already. So the, this even the budget exchange. itself should be revised. Okay. I'm not saying we don't need this exercise. We need it. Yeah, but it should is. we reject it like the individual bondholders forum are saying? Because oh, they're yes. not only speaking to the individual bondholders, they're talking to those who have invested in mutual funds. In fact, funds, the entire exercise needs to be revised. Needs to be revised to make creditor borrower comfortable. Can government, we afford to do that now? Because we're we, told that this is see, one are, of the things are, that we, are, we need we are, in order are, to we finalize are, we are, we are that deal with the IMF. into things because we've tied this exercise to political, you know, regimes. We've tied it to elections. 
Is that what we're yes, trying we to, want to, make money to deal available. with the IMF? As you see, when you are speaking to the policymaker, mm. who turns out to be the politician, mm. they are kind of economic management that's not go beyond four years. I'm telling you, because they know what is likely to happen. Yeah. All these structures that they're trying to put up, in, even the framing of the interest rate structures, by the, this year, 0%, 5% next year, mm -hmm. who is going to take over to pay the 10% of, over the rest of the years? I mean, all the structures point to the fact that clearly there's a political undertone, but the exercise we are doing is not a political thing. We need to look beyond politics. Mm. Look at the country as a whole. And then structure the interest rate. And I always say that this exercise is an economic exercise, which has a benefit. And it has a cost. Benefit to who? To who? The benefit to the state. The How benefit is that we're going to create fiscal space mm -hmm. for government to put the economy back on a sustainable path. Mm. But then the cost is going to be that Investors, if this exercise is not handled very well, investors are going to lose confidence in government instrument. To the point where, when I was growing up, I saw my grandmother's, in my grandmother's trunk, some cash in there. Mm. And when you go to the various institutions, you see places called cash office. Because those days, people never trusted the system. So they were taking their monies from you know, the cash office directly, mm. their salaries. Mm. And the point where, you know, monies were not being taken to the bank. Somebody would say, by, that time we were, by the time we had no, you know, many banks. So mm. people were keeping their monies in the house. But others were still saving. So it has built up, it has taken us so many years to develop that kind of interest. Yeah. To the point where government can easily raise money from what? Its citizens. And then citizens benefiting from government activities. Let us not use this exercise to collapse, you know, that kind Problem of... Let me stay know, on you uh, uh, short, shortly because I know you have to leave. But yes, there's yes, also yes. concern that uh, people who have invested in treasury bills as well may be affected. And this is uh, lawyer Martin Kibu saying this based on, um, you know, a section that he saw in the document that was released by the finance ministry that says that such treasury bills and non-marketable securities may, however, be the subject of other exchanges and purchases by the government of Ghana from time to time. Should treasury bill investors be worried? that they could also lose their investment. You see, if you look at the investor community, the government is trying to make up some savings. They're targeting around $137 billion, yeah. and of which this exercise will be declared successful if they are able to get 80% out of that mm. you know, $137 billion. But you see, treasury bills, if you look at the debt composition, you go to the Ministry of Finance website and the the bond holdings of um, government. Mm. Treasury bill is about three billion, right? Yeah. So the savings that government wants to make. If government should touch treasury bills mm -hmm. now, the economic consequence is going to be there. How dare? I mean, government uses treasury bills sometimes to pay salaries. Mm -hmm. So the kind of recurrent operations that government is supposed to have, if we don't take and people take their money out of that space. Mm. It will collapse. So they cannot touch treasury bills? Well, I'm not saying they can't touch it, but I'm just giving you the economic consequence okay. if government should go in that direction. For now, all that I'm looking out for is engagement. Mm. Get into the investor space. Pensions. The pensions, they are even not out of the woods yet. Mm. Um, individual bondholders. Pension, the pension funds are not out of the woods. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Even yes. though we've been told oh, that they have been Yesterday, there was a statement by the finance minister. Yeah. They are still in negotiations. Mm -hmm. And even if they exempt them indirectly, they, ma they may have to invest. Because let me tell you one thing. At the end of the month, people have contributed the money, mm. their money. Would the pension fund manager collect this money and keep them somewhere else mm. without necessarily investing them? Hmm. You can't oh. afford to hold zero, you know, interest. funds, yeah. interest funds for your, you know, pensioners. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's a space we are operating in. We must all understand. Government must come to the table. As far as all the stakeholders are involved, let's jaw jaw. If five zero percent that we don't want, possibly front load it. Mm. Give them certain levels of interest, with like fifteen percent. Mm. If you can't, you don't, you can't, you don't want to pay interest. Give them part of their principal, so that over years you can reduce the principal, as the banks will say, amortized. You know, convert them from interest-only loan. 
to anamortize loan, mm. where the investor's principal that he thinks will be staying for all that long period, he'll be getting bit and bit of it. So if mm. he has any alternative investment to do with it, then he can it think of it. it. Wow. You know, so. Is Dr. Edu Sakodia right? Yesterday he was talking, and this will be my final question to you. I yes, have to yes. Forgive me. But yesterday he mentioned that, I mean, that we, we owe the Paris Club and all these other international or external um, you know, people that we've borrowed from. If we can get a waiver or we can get them to, um, you know, slash what we owe them, mm. then maybe we will be able to save a bit yeah. so that we won't have to necessarily implement the domestic Definitely, debt exchange yeah, sure. program. Is that right? And why yeah, have we I, not I, tried I think, that? you see, <laughs> if you look at the complexities of the, our debt as we speak now, compared to the 80s mm. that we had that kind of debt forgiveness, in the 90s we even had HIPIC, it's different. This time, you see the way pensioners are crying here, mm. and then also I mean, insurance companies and banks are yeah. you know, crying here. The euro bond market, those who are investing there are also people's pension funds and mm. all those. So mm. they are purely commercial. Mm. And negotiations on commercial loans are different. And especially when the holdings are well spread. If the holdings are well spread, it's difficult to get a buy-in across board. Mm. That is why most of the time, the the, the negotiations are done on clusters. Okay. Right? So effectively, it is difficult to get... Well, I may say that, of course, um, you may start in-house mm -hmm. before you get a very good, you know, um, kind of negotiation leverage okay. with the outside, outside investor. Okay. Because the outside investor gave you the money to come and invest in your domestic market. Mm -hmm. Before the outside investor will appreciate, you know, uh, the kind of debt negotiations you want to have with them, they may want you to get a buy-in of your, you know, um, um, I mean, local yeah. investors. Because the local investors, whatever the case may be, if there's a very good negotiation and it turns up that, okay, fine, outside investors, okay, if you're paying the debt for 10 years, pay it for 20 years, um, you need the local capacity to build to up build. to pay. Okay. So we may have to start in-house, get, you know, a domestic kind of, you know, buy-in mm -hmm. as far as, I mean, debt forgiveness is concerned. It is not debt it's, forgiveness. It's restructuring. It's restructuring yeah. And then possibly get a support of the IMF before we go and meet this external credit. I see. Interesting. Well, thank you so much, mm. Prof, for joining us. And You're our welcome. ladies are still here. We'll continue the conversation, but picture. we'll let him take leave of us. Uh, <laughs> Professor Lord Mensah is... Um, uh, at the Finance Department of the University of Ghana Business School. It's been a pleasure having you. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, um, we'll, we'll play a video, an interview that we had with Mr. Kwame um, in PNM, where he says that we're actually sitting on a time bomb waiting to explode. Keep watching. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is still the big issue on TV3 New Day. Still in the studios, Ellen Ama Deko on behalf of the NPP, uh, Nanaya Chimpim Jantua, General Secretary of the CPP, and Beatrice Annan Esquire on behalf of the NDC. And now we'll get into the conversation, of course, still about the domestic debt restructuring program, but uh, the fact that yesterday we had a conversation with Mr. Kwame Pienim, and when I say we, I'm talking about Pa Kwesi, uh, a colleague of ours, who sat down with him to have a conversation on where we're going as a nation, our debt restructuring program, and whether it was even a good idea to introduce the domestic debt exchange program. And he said that in actual fact, we're sitting on a time bomb waiting to explode. Take a look. The British government had debts to restructure. Every patriotic British agreed we won't collect interest on it. They call it consul. And if my memory serves me right, the consul, the last payment of the principal, was done in about 1970-something. People were proud to have given. I would have been proud as a Ghanaian to contribute. But I will not contribute one person. Why? To Kenoforiata, Kenoforiata leading this, he led that into the gutter. He says, let me read the concluding part of the revised statement, that on behalf of the government and the people of Ghana, I ask, yeah. for your full support for this invitation to exchange and for your partnership as we carry forward our economic reform program. This is a man sincerely coming to you and saying, no. help us no. to restructure the you economy. I said, I apologize. This is the result of economic mismanagement. I apologize to Ghanaian people. Look, they are pensioners. Pensioners who have put their resources into government bonds. You are asking them, 
I'm not going to pay. Look at the same program and think about it carefully when you are talking to your colleagues. Ken is saying, I'm not going to pay any interest on this for this year. Why is I'm Minister for Finance? Why my president is still president? But afterwards, then we are going to take a look at it. The IMF, three billion that they are going to give us. I want them to front load it so that I'll chop it before I go. Is that genuine? Are you serious that this is genuine? If the president wants Keno Furiata to continue there, this government will go down with Keno Furiata. Mr. Kwame Pienim is a founding father of the governing New Patriotic Party. And yes, he, I mean, he's been very vocal about uh, the leadership style of especially the finance minister, Honorable Ken um, Oforiata. And he says that you should have come to apologize to us for mismanaging um, the economy, first of all. Ellen, do you agree? Are we sitting on a ticking time bomb? And should your government have apologized to us by now for where we are? Well, whether I agree or not, I think it's inconsequential. Mr. Kwame Pienim is, is an astute finance person. Mm. And uh, he knows, I'm sure he has information that all of us here would not have. And he's entitled to his opinion. Mm. I believe that we should just take the, 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 the things he said into consideration and work with it. But my agreement with him or not, as I said, I don't mm. think it, it really matters. But I'll still, with everything said, especially with what Doc mm -hmm. and all the explanations that he has said, I think it all boils down to communication. It all boils down to engagement. So I will still repeat what I said when we started this whole, whole thing, that the finance ministry should engage. Mm. And they shouldn't just engage the bondholders and, um, and address their problems. They should also engage all of us, the whole country, so that the confidence in the economy is maintained and built built upon. Mm. When there's no information, it's difficult to take a decision. And people take decisions out of panic. You were asking about the Treasury bills. Yeah. From what I know, Treasury bills are not part of, of this whole thing. And as Doc explained, mm -hmm. uh, he gave the finance reason why the, the, the finance ministry will not be touching the Treasury bills. Mm. And I think I do agree with him on that score. But the information should be there. If Doc hasn't said this, or explained to all of us here why the, um, the Treasury bills will not be touched. I didn't know. I'm mm. not a finance person. And it's, well, he says it should not be touched. But as to whether he, it will be touched no, or not. No, he said he gave an explanation why he believes it, it should not be, be touched. Yeah. And as I said, the explanation is, 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 is good. So I tell me that the finance ministry would don't know this. And why are they not letting us all know? Yes, they have stated that the Treasury bills will not be touched. But mm. the question we should ask them, why? Why won't it be touched? What is your reason? Doc has given us that information. I believe information is so, so, so important to get us all out of this. When you don't have information, Beatrice will say what she wants to say, twist it how she wants to say it. Uh, Auntie Yao would also say what she also wants to say, twist it how she wants, wants, it, wants to say it. Is it about twisting it? Of we, course. I mean, are we are... Citizens we are, whose money is we are, we are. We are also, remember, and that information all three that of we us, have here. the only person whose word that I would take 100% and whose critique mm -hmm. I would also... Uh, imbibe in is Doc. Why because him and why the, not? He is the professional. They are, all pro, they are all politicians just like me. And they'll do everything to make their, their, their party. Oh, my so my you think that they are making statements based on politics and not 100%. So they're not being objective. objective. These, these, are these, are objective. These, are, these are concerns that the Ghanaians have also put out. Are you saying that for every Ghanaian who talks about this, they are saying it based on Partisan the two lines? of them, I believe, right here, it is based on part partisan lines. Definitely. They are also Ghanaians. Definitely. They've also had, um, well, Auntie Ya has her money, as she just explained to us, in mm. pension funds. So, yes, she would also feel Are you affected? Pension. No, I don't have any. I've never worked in any public institution. So, as for me, I've always been a private so okay. you, have, you don't have an individual bond? No, you know. I don't. You don't? You've no. not invested in any of that? No, I don't. I see. Yes. So, so all my life I've been in private work, entrepreneurship. So for me... And, no, but even but, if you're but, an entrepreneur, but, you would still want to buy some bonds here and there, I which is why I'm asking. I haven't. But okay. then I, my father is a pensioner. Mm. <laughs> he has his money in, in this. My siblings I have all worked all their lives. So they have their money in mm. my friends. So it's, 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 this Christmas I really did see very close up how lack of information and telling them what they need to know 
has affected them. That's how I would agree. But as I said, those of us here at the table, she's NDC, she's CPP. So definitely there will also be the political slant to it. But when you bring in people like Doc, who mm -hmm. explain to all of us exactly what it is, I think we should take it and then imbibe it. But, he said that, Mr. But, but, Benny, but what he said was he not like different from well, what everybody said, has said he on the add, table. He didn't yeah, add any political twist to it. No, but, they, no, but they, what he's saying is that we have to even relook at the whole domestic yes. debt exchange Bella, you are not getting it. What I am saying, what I'm saying is that Antia and Beatrice would add political twist to it. So when you do have other people who are not politicians like us, and they will come and they will give us the information, it is excellent. And I was saying that in relation to the Ministry of Finance, mm. that they should also give us the information, just like Doc has. Okay. And then we can we can move on with it. But as for Mr. Mpiani, as I said, he has Mr. Mr. Pieni. Mr. Yes. Why do Pieni. I keep I'm sorry. I, I guess I started yeah. that by mentioning. So he it's, he's, it's he's an astute um, finance person. He he has his opinions. Mm. He's always had his opinions. And so what he says, we will take the the best out of it and then use it. Are you ever going to apologize to Ghanaians? Who is going to apologize? The NPP. The NPP. In power. Are you ever going to apologize to Ghanaians for, for where we have gotten to now and why things are so That is his opinion bad? and that is why he thinks it should but be. But that's I, what I'm I asking really, you, that really, from where you sit. I really don't know. Do you think that at least the finance minister and the NPP government should be apologizing to Ghanaians for where we are at the moment, which is no fault of I ours? Don't, I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. Nanaya. Yes, baby. Well, <laughs> clearly from what Ellen is saying, there's a political <laughs> twist to what you're saying because clearly you also have your political interest here. Do you agree? Oh, my political interest is the interest of Ghana. The people of Ghana, the people who, if I have any interest, it's more of the people who are going through what is happening. People who have, are losing the interest on their investment. You see, everything that we said, Doc said in, it's in the same manner. Mm. But he used financial language. We use plain language for people to understand. So he's not, he mentioned the word mismanagement. Mm. He said because of the mismanagement of the economy, we are where we are. He said it. He did not mean sweat on it. And that is the basis upon which the foundation, upon which what is happening is happening. Mm. If there was prudence, of which uh, Mr. Kwan Pieni always spoke about prudence, we wouldn't have been where we are. Meanwhile, this government has become like peacocks. They've become like ostriches, making it uh, seem as if they haven't done anything, but it is us, and we need to pay for it. We have 23 banks who are affected by this. Mm. Do you get me? Mm. The money in bonds is about 55 billion. 55 billion of people's monies are in bonds. I mean, how can you just, uh, I mean, get up and say that I, I, I am I, I mean, doing an exchange program, giving you such an interest rate, whether you like it or not, go and sign on, on the new one. How? People's money, my own money I've worked for all my life. But if we don't do that, we will not... My dear, the point is that who is responsible for what is happening? Honorable Ken Ophuriata, instead of being interested in running to the Ministry of Trade to set traps, to set traps. Yes, traps. To, Why would he want to do uh, that? Yes, he wants to set traps so that he can get things out of. Why is he running there? He's is there, he, is it, he the one running there? The person was the, the one point that asked is him that to be Why did he say minister? that? He, I have, he hasn't even finished with the economy. Mm. Do you get me? He's a, he has a huge responsibility to make this economy bounce back. And he's adding on more responsibility because maybe he thinks there's something there that he can go and harness. That's why he's setting the traps going there. Why anybody? There are two deputies. Mm. Why can't they act? Instead of he looking at what is going, he's busy going there to do what? Maybe they'll add on Ministry of Agri too. Now that uh, because we don't know yet. No, but we'll my wait dear, and see. The point is that that's why I said maybe. maybe yeah. Why is he rushing there when the economy is like this? His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia, the chairman of the uh, economic management, is busy selling himself to be the next president. Instead of concentrating on the economy. Instead of making sure that we don't go through what we are going through. He's busy. I saw something. They said that Dr. Baumia is the making of a vice president. Mm -hmm. Selling himself at this time when we are in dire streets. When we are in trouble. When the economy hasn't bounced back. That in December, they just put in some charade, some cantata, something, to show that something is happening. 
and now we are back to where we are it will be worse when the investors start repatriating their profits which is mandatory yeah. by law mm -hmm. that's also expected by what february yeah february march starts, yeah. that is when it starts i have even stopped looking at the um exchange, exchange rate. yes because it gives me high blood pressure that's at a point you told me it is this and now in a short time it is moving fast like that so i don't even look at it <clears throat> If they are talking about bedding share, what is their portion of the bedding share? Because this bond thing that we are talking about, it is part of the bedding share. What is their portion? As Beatrice said, are they not do don't they have invest investments in the bonds? It means that their money is not in Ghana. Because if their money was in Ghana, mm. they would be concerned. They would be concerned. How is it that a government instrument? Now we cannot have any hope in it. The most secure, risk-free instrument of investment that was available to us was the bonds long term. Yeah. So that when I get my money bulk as a pensioner or whatever money I get, I put it in there and I know that it is safe. I know that it is safe. Now what is happening? If they are talking about burden sharing, they are talking about sacrifice, all the money that. Um, what is his name? Bo Bo um, the, the young man who was uh, the deputy minister. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Edu Boan. Edu Boan, yes. And, Charles Edu um, The finance minister. Mm -hmm. All the money they've taken as transaction advices. They should return it so that we know that we are all burden sharing. They should return all the money? Yes. Okay. To also add on to the burden sharing. Mm. Because they enrich themselves when we were being impoverished through loans. Because okay. it's the loans that they have taken, they cannot pay. The interest rates, the interest on these loans cannot be paid. And that is what we are going. Now, the, everybody has blacklisted us. So whatever money they have accrued, as part of any work they have done concerning the loans that we have collected all these seven years or six years, which is more than loans that were sitting from, for 60 years, the loans that they have collected, it is more than the loans that Ghana had for a period of 60 years. Can you imagine? You cannot even work out the ratios and the percentages. Hmm. So whatever they have collected as fees, they it is, yes, because it, they, they got it through us. If they didn't go and take a loan on our behalf, they wouldn't have gotten that money. So they should return. You see, Bell, I'm telling you, from now on, any government that comes into power, we should give them KPIs. I've said it and I'll continue saying it. We should give them key performance indicators and we give them a time of two years. We should to change meet the KPIs. Yes. And, we, and if after the two years they don't meet it, we should happens? change our constitution to include that if you don't make it, we take you out. Because we cannot stand this thing. So we're reducing the tenure to two years. We are, it is four years. Uh -huh. But if you don't perform okay. in, two, in years, two years, you have to go. go. There are some who are pushing for five years. So Five uh, years or what? I mean, in this kind of mess, if we had that provision anywhere, we would have kicked these people out by now. We are going to. We, we had the opportunity to kick them out. I mean, they dear, were re elected. Into yes, office. because they were re elected because some people, you know, Ghana, you see, if you don't take Trotro, you don't know what the ordinary Ghanaian thinks. The ordinary Ghanaian in Trotro will tell you that democracy is eight years in their mind. So even if they are sinking. They did, nobody has come for us to sink like this before, my dear. Which is why I'm saying that so this, we the did, same Ghanaian still voted. No, we didn't give provision for this thing. We didn't dream about it. This kind of situation that we are going through, Bella, we did not, envis we did not envisage it. Okay. It wasn't envisioned. We didn't see it coming. So, my dear, I think that once we have experienced this going forward, we should have KPIs. Because, you see, the power they wield politicians will when they come into power is from us we should start exacting that power instead of them they are our servants we have given them a job to do and we are paying them enough beatrice do you agree also bearing in mind that the ndc is looking to come back into power and so should if we should amend the constitution to introduce kpis which after two years if you don't meet you'll have to be voted out would you agree that, to that that's that's a very interesting view but i before i address nana's concerns i think that Ellen should appreciate that sometimes when we speak, we don't only speak because we are politicians. I have consistently maintained that 
economic hardship does not discriminate. So this morning when I get to the fuel pump, I will not show my NDC card to buy fuel. She will not show the MPP card. Mm. So when we are talking about economic hardship, and sometimes when we sit here, for me, I think that I represent the young mothers who are single mothers. I'm not a single mother, mm. but as a mother, I represent mothers and I appreciate the rippling effect of the government's mismanagement on the lives of mothers. I have children who are in school. I appreciate the depreciation in the lives of other children in the same school. I have young women who are aspiring to be professionals and their parents' funds have been locked up and so dreams have been shattered. And so when we sit here, we appreciate these things from this perspective. Mm. We have siblings and we have family members who depend on us, who pick Chocho, who have little investment and who are having to suffer the economic mismanagement. Mm -hmm. So when we get to a place where we are in the history of our country, where we've never gotten as a result of economic mismanagement, profligacy, nepotism, and unconscious incompetence, and we are speaking, is not because of politics. Because when the country is good, every body benefits, mm. even if not an equal measure. But Bella, having established that point, this government is doing this debt restructuring, even with the next election in mind. How? They just want to break the eight. Bella, have you read the amended and um, restated exchange memorandum? Mm. That Parts the, of it, yes. Yeah. So this is what the government is doing. The government wants money for 2024 election. And so they are front-loading the interest to beyond 2024. Why is it that you can't pay some of the interest in 2023, mm. pay some in 2024, pay some in 2025? But you're doing zero interest now. You're doing 5% in 2026. And in 10 years, you're doing about... 17 percent well, yeah, okay. or so yeah why because they want the citizens to suffer now for them to have money and going into the 2024 election they can still have money so to spend is this not conjecture is this not conjecture is not conjecture is politics attached to it. Read, I mean, I read the this. amended an exchange memo, a restated exchange memo. Read it. But they have not stated there. explicitly that this is what we want to do to you so that but we why? can retain why power. Why is government doing that? Then maybe they can tell us. I can defer my time for yeah, but I just want to say that government is doing emphatically that. that that's not what they said. No, but in the that statement. is what so government are you is not doing. I'm saying based that on that your is, deduction from that, that, that statement. That is what government is doing. And assuming they were even doing that just to break the aid, so every citizen must suffer because this government wants to break the eight. But as even they were just doing that, one would have, like you are saying, maybe you will say you don't have evidence. Do you know what the government is doing? In the new bonds they are issuing, they are introducing something we call the collective action clauses, mm. where for the bonds, some super majority of 75% can decide any time there has to be a debt restructuring for the rest of us who would then be the individuals who will always be in the minority. Mm. Now, that clause in itself is a very problematic one because even in the recent one when they wrote to the Attorney General, the Attorney General advised them against it. Yeah. They have further stated that, in fact, if you go to court and you get judgment, mm -hmm. with the amended version we have, you cannot even attach any government property that is for the use of the public. Can you show me one government property that is not for the use of the public? Why must the MPP government think that they are wiser than anybody? The government that promised us that they were going to transform the economy from the Gottesberg economy has now taken us to hell. The government that 
promise that that they had an economic talisman. Now, Dr. Baumian is an economic barber, giving everybody a haircut. The government that promised us that they were going to move the economy from taxation to production mm. is today not only imposing 21 taxes on us, they are practically, I mean, breathing, they are practically killing us. Why? Which is and what I was asking earlier. Being, Sorry, but which is what I was asking earlier, so that you can explain to us, because we're told that there are three groups that are looking to take a class action or file class action lawsuits. Does it mean that even if they win this case in court, there really can't be anything that will be done about, you know, the inclusion of you see, these individual bonds? The, if you can break it down to yes, the regular so the Ghanaian. amended statement mm -hmm. which they issued with all these things cannot have a retrospective effect. Okay. So these bonds holders have their bonds under certain condition. Now, if you look at the instrument, there was no room for amendment or restructuring. Mm -hmm. So what government is doing is more like imposing it on them. And once it's implemented, once, so the even if you win a lawsuit, you cannot yes, come back and change yes. it. Mm -hmm. You cannot wow. come back and change it. And so they are saying that for us as government, we want to be comfortable. We don't want to be part of the burden share. For you as citizens, you can carry all the burden. If you go to court and you get a judgment, you have a paper. That is what the government is telling us. And shamefully, in the most painful manner, we will have to live with this government again. Okay. Well, that's if they don't extend the deadline again. Uh, we're told that... Monday the 16th is when that deadline um, actually expires. Let's see if there will be an extension or not and if these uh, class action lawsuits would actually take place and what eventually that would mean. But thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Ellen Amadek is a member of the MPP communications team. Nanaya Chimpim Jantua is the general secretary of the CPP and Beatrice Anan Esquire is a member of the NDC communications team. Now, earlier we played a short conversation that Parkway Siasari had with Mr. Kwame Pienim. In fact, there's a longer version which we're going to play uh, for you now. So for those of you who've been looking forward to watching that interview, there was a lot that he touched on. And so we're getting straight into that now. And when that is over, we'll come back for sports, entertainment, and more. So watch this and keep watching TV3 New Day. We'll be right back. Thank you so much.